Hello, Darren L. Hammond here with Sipminis.com and my subject for today is economy in writing. So not the financial kind, but the writing kind. And when we talk about economy in writing, um, I refer to it as um, cutting out the dead wood. So words, phrases, uh, repetition, anything in your language that is not accomplishing anything. It's like dead wood. The first rule that we have is to combine related sentences. And the way that you'll detect these is you'll see re repeated nouns, adjectives, verbs, important words that um, are repeated in two sentences close together. What this means is that you've got repeated content and you can condense those by combining them together and cutting out what's left. A few cautions. Avoid combining using the word and. and there's reason for this. If you use and, you're simply adding to the length of the sentences rather than condensing them. You want to make sure you keep the necessary information. Um, this seems obvious, but you don't want to cut too far. You don't want to cut into the meaning of what you're trying to convey. And you want to combine sentences two at a time. Sometimes you'll have a whole paragraph that needs some work. Well, rather than tackle the whole paragraph at once, work at the sentences two by two, combining and condensing, and you'll have a far better effect than if you try to wrestle with the whole paragraph at once. Uh, here's an example for you. And um, these examples are technical, but you'll see, you can notice the repetition even if you don't know what exactly is being talked about. So the following is a detailed description of the ATM experimental measurement system. This description, and you can see the repetition there. If we uh, work at it, we can trim that down, combine those two sentences, and notice the number of words that we save here. And in general, they say in writing, if you can say the same thing in fewer words, you're better off. So we've saved a lot of words there. Let's continue on to cut irrelevant detail. Now, this one is a little bit more of a broad rule, and I don't have an example for it, but um, there's roughly about 50% of uh, waste in your writing that comes from strain from your main idea or your main point. So, uh, this is something we really need to take a close look at, and here are some ideas to help you in cutting irrelevant detail. Um, first of all, you've got to identify the purpose in the sentence, the paragraph, the essay, and cut all that which is extra. So when you deviate at all from your decided purpose, then cut it. And in order to do that, you've got to have a little bit of objectivity with your writing. Um, when we write things at first, we fall in love with them because they just left our fingertips. Uh, get a little bit of objectivity and commit yourself to cutting 
at least about a third of a blog post or a paper that you're writing because uh, research says that about a third of what we write is unnecessary uh, or is repeated. The other thing you need is a little bit of distance and you can accomplish this by simply setting your draft of the blog post or the essay aside for um, a day or two if you can. Uh, even an hour or two will help. You'll find yourself being a lot more objective um, if you distance yourself a bit. Now, we can also cut repeated words. Now, the first rule uh, was referring to separate sentences. This is referring to repeated words within the same sentence. So you can see here, test and test repeated, and there is absolutely no need for it. Uh, in the revision there, TRA plant engineering will perform this test and submit results. The second test isn't even needed. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, cut repeated ideas is a little more complex because we're talking about um, the ideas that the words convey, the meanings that the words convey. Um, white in color Obviously, white is a color, so we don't need to say in color. Cores in the center. Cores are the center, therefore we don't need to repeat the center. So you get the idea. Um, there are repeated ideas buried within um, the actual writing itself. And if we cut it out, it makes for a much cleaner sentence. Next one, cut phrases that are already implied. These are phrases that we use frequently, and we just use them for filler space. We think they sound good. Uh, in fact, the writing sounds better without them. In terms of reactor shutdown time, in terms of, it has been concluded that um, all of that is extra language. It should be noted that, well, if you're writing it down, obviously it should be noted. So, much cleaner version without that yellow material. This isn't a hard, fast rule, but one that um, is good to live by as much as possible, cut who, which, and that. Almost always, they're taking up extra room in your writing. And um, they're called relative pronouns, which means that they can refer to various different things. And um, oftentimes we use them without any purpose whatsoever. In uh, the example here, we have a really poor example. The sentence is twisted and made passive, um, but the risk identification tree developed by M.T. Johnson, which was to prevent oversight of specific energy sources, is presented. Um, that one has so much clutter that it's almost hard to read. The simplified version flows much better. M.T. Johnson developed the risk identification tree to prevent oversight of specific energy sources. Um, the other one that I want to call your attention to is the use of there and it. 
Of course, as with the others, these aren't hard fast rules, but almost always when you use there are or it is, there will be, um, when you use these words, generally speaking, you use two to three more words than necessary in the sentence. So it reduces clarity. Um, by trimming them, you will add clarity to your writing. And I think I have an example here of that in the operation of a general purpose machine. There are a certain number of functions that must be performed and we simply cut that out in the operation of a general purpose machine. A certain number of functions must be performed and you can see we've lost nothing by getting rid of that. So there are six ways you can condense your writing and make it more powerful. Hope you found this helpful in your writing and that you'll subscribe to our channel and follow us on zipminis.com for writing and science related material. Thank you for your time.